at the end of 2021, the Financial Conduct Authority will no longer regulate LIBOR and won't expect the banks to necessarily report uh, into the poll that produces LIBOR every day. And the banks don't want to do that. Uh, it just raises uh, litigation risks and reputational risks for them uh, because of the past manipulations of LIBOR. And LIBOR itself is not really a reliable benchmark because the transactions that underlie it, meaning one month, three month, or six month unsecured term borrowing by large banks, those transactions are much, much thinner now than they were before. So the rate's just not that reliable as a benchmark. Most of the numbers being reported are just opinions, which is what got us into trouble in the first place. At the same time, the head of the uh, European regulator, ESMA, Stephen Mayor, has announced that in 2020, a year earlier, uh, Euribor and Ionia will no longer be available uh, for similar concerns. The banks in Europe are also disappearing from those polls, and there's worries about the robustness of those two European benchmarks. Between them, those two benchmarks, Ionia and LIBOR, account for three to four hundred trillion dollars of swaps. And the market is concerned for obvious reasons. What are we going to do? Going forward, each of the currency zones, except Europe so far, have proposed alternative benchmarks. In the United States, the benchmark is the overnight repo rate, uh, which will be called the Secured Overnight Financing Rate, or SOFR. And so, perhaps in five years, almost all of our rates markets, which are floating rate, whether swaps or floating rate notes, corporate loans, even credit cards and mortgage loans linked to, currently linked to LIBOR, those will be based on SOFR. And there's a transition project that's underway to get people to start using these new rates. In fact, next week, the Fed is going to publish SOFR for the first time. Uh, one of the concerns I have is that these hundreds of trillions of legacy LIBOR and Euribor contracts span well beyond the end of the, or at least the suggested end of these, of these new benchmarks. Uh, so what are we going to do with these legacy contracts? Once Euribor and LIBOR are not available, how will they settle? Uh, they can't. If the, if the benchmarks are gone, they need to settle based on the new benchmarks. So you're going to need to talk to, let's say, your counterparty on a swap and negotiate, perhaps, what they would accept in view of getting LIBOR and only getting SOFR a much smaller rate, what they would accept in compensation for that change. And that's not an easy conversation because there's no liquid markets currently for SOFR and there may not be in time uh, to conduct these negotiations. Perhaps the industry groups like ISDA will step in and find a protocol for making those compensatory contract adjustments. Uh, but there's little of that even ISDA could do if, uh, if there's no liquid market for SOFR-based products going out to term structure to, say, 10 years. An alternative that I've been working on is a series of periodic auctions uh, that in which buyers and sellers will come into the market providing bids and offers to convert their legacy contracts to the new rates. And uh, those auctions will settle at a market clearing rate which could be used as the benchmark for converting other contracts that don't participate in the auctions. And I've been discussing this proposal with regulators and banks and buy-side firms and central counterparties who would probably have to conduct the auctions uh, to gauge uh, the usefulness of the approach and to help me understand uh, some of the design problems that are involved. There's also a PhD student here at Stanford named Anthony Jung who's um, uh, writing a research paper on how to do that, on how to design the, uh, the auction so that it'll be appealing to those that want to bid uh, and so that the prices that come out of those auctions will be reliable uh, for protocol-based conversion for those that don't want to bid in the auction. 
So that's um, um, a project that, that is the whole transition, is a project that uh, needs more attention. A lot of people are still writing 10-year LIBOR contracts without thinking about the fact that LIBOR may not be here three years from now. There are industry groups in the United States. The group is called the Alternative Reference Rate Committee uh, that are leading uh, this transition. Uh, but the financial industry, I think, needs to come to grips with the fact that this needs to be done before it becomes an emergency.